First of all, we're going to talk about the Samsung S95B. It's one of the most anticipated TVs this year. A um, lot of hype surrounding it. Um, it was available in the US to our US listeners uh, a number of months ago now. They've had uh, time to get into it and calibrate it and have a look and so on, but we only got them in the marketplace last week. We bought ours. We went out and purchased it. Um, it's not cheap for the UK. Uh, it's £3,400 for the 65-inch. Um, that is quite a bit of money, especially when you then see the build quality. Um, this is, it's not a premium product from that point of view. You're basically paying for the Q, the QD OLED technology. That's what you're paying for. Um, you're, you're definitely not paying for build quality. The, uh, uh, the panel, it moves, it's very flexible. Um, it could quite easily be damaged, um, if it's being moved around quite a bit. For most people, that won't be an issue. Um, you're going to put it on your TV stand and it's going to be there for the next five to ten years. Um, if you're a TV reviewer and you're somebody who puts th stuff up all the time for uh, comparisons and you're continually moving things around, it flexes, it moves about. And if it's packed wrong in the box as well, and I have heard um, a couple of stories from the US where they have turned up and the panel has been warped, um, that is a possibility. Uh, the build quality is not great. The stand is a bit plastic. Well, it's all plastic um, at the back. It's nicely designed. There's lots of uh, cable management and so on. And it's got a nice sort of um, aluminium look to the front. But again, in terms of the build quality, the back panel is, again, plastic. Um, so corners have been cut. Uh, there's no doubt about that. This is not a luxury product. It hasn't been built like a luxury product. But again, it's because it's uh, new OLED technology, it's QD OLED. Um, so let's cut to the chase. What were the numbers? Well, I, my initial testing, and I'm going to be testing for a number of weeks, you can see that uh, the TV is behind me with an LG C2 uh, next to each other at the minute, both 65 inch TVs. Uh, both of them at the moment are in the filmmaker mode uh, out of the box. The Eagle Lied will be able to tell which one the Samsung is and which one the LG is. Um, just by the white, uh, the way it displays white. One is very red, the other is very cyan. That's the spectral output of the, how the different panels work. Um, so that aside, the big numbers, uh, everybody wants to know peak brightness, uh, 1,000 nits. Uh, that's uh, on a 10% window in filmmaker mode. It was exactly the same on an 8% window, on a 9% window, and so on. We did check the different window sizes. I'm going to come back to that um, in a second. Uh, and 200 nits, basically, um, on 100% white, which is a good 50 nits above most of the competition out there. Um, although the G2... Uh, does push probably about 170 nits, so you wouldn't have noticed the the difference between the G2 and the and the Samsung there. But uh, again, impressive numbers. Uh, as far as I'm aware, there is no heatsink on, on this panel, um, so it really is pushing that um, and they're pushing the panel. Now, a bit of controversy uh, was generated by a video that Vincent did at HCTV Test, um, where he identified that the EOTF tracking uh, was varying depending on the window size being used for the measurements. And he suggested that it was perhaps um, something that was built into the TV uh, to manipulate that when the TV was being tested. So basically a, a diesel gate for TVs. It, it would oh. know when it was being sent a 10% window and it would switch into the I'm going to measure accurate mode. Um, there's been quite a bit of scepticism about this uh, and other testing and so on. Um, I've done my testing, I uh, used a Meridio uh, 7 generator to generate the, the windows, uh, Kalman software, and um, varied the, the window size. So measured, first of all, at 10%, and it measured the EOTF tracking uh, where it should be in terms of the standard, and then bumped it down to an 8% window. Uh, did the same test again and um, it was brightening it so it was doing the old samsung thing where it brightens mm -hmm. the the eotf from about 300 nits uh, to about 800 nits there is a, a very distinct bump in the brightness um, in terms of sdr uh, filmmaker mode in sdr was fairly inaccurate um, for filmmaker mode, which I was surprised about because the, the UHDA are quite strict about manufacturers. If they're going to use filmmaker mode, um, then it has to track as close as possible to the standards out of the box. Obviously, there is variance. There's going to be panel variance and so on. It was too red, um, and, and it's quite obvious that, that that was the case. So 
it is a little bit inaccurate. If you're looking for accuracy out of the box, uh, Filmmaker Mode and SDR was a little bit accurate. The color gamut appears to be fine, even uh, using different window sizes. The actual gamut size uh, remained the same. The uh, saturation tracking uh, remained the same between the different window sizes. So there was nothing going on there. It was more uh, the white balance and EOTF side of things were um, using a, a, a non-standard uh, window was pushing the, the brightness um, of the UTF. So that is happening. Is that uh, a defeat device or something built into the TV? I have no evidence to suggest that is the case. Um, I can only report back the facts that I have found, and that is um, that my results uh, tally with what Vincent's found um, on his TV in terms of measurements and so on. So in terms of EOTF tracking, um, it is, it is, uh, it's, it, it's inaccurate um, in non-standard sizes. So you can make your own conclusions based on the evidence that's presented there. I mean, it's, uh, there's nothing conclusive there, but, you know, circumstantially something is going on and something is happening uh -huh. there. So. Uh, if it's if it's what you're looking for in terms of accuracy, it's not great um, from that term of things. I'm still working on the calibration side of things. I want to try as much as I can um, and different scenarios and so on just to see how the TV behaves. So I'm not going to report on that just yet. You'll have to wait for the full review uh, for that. And I'm just quickly going through my notes just to see what else I can tell you about it um, tonight. So um, SDR is overly bright as well. Uh, the gamma um, is too bright. Uh, even if you select BT eighteen eighty six, it's down towards two point one, um, which is wow. which is not what you want to see with uh, with SDR content. Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely pushing brightness. And the problem with that is, yes, it looks great. The color volume is superb. Uh, DCI P three and UV was ninety nine percent, and XY um, sorry XY was ninety nine percent. UV was a hundred percent of DCI P three uh, in terms of coverage. So. You know, it's got wired color gamut and all the rest of it. It it pushes it. Everything is pushed for for brightness. And the problem with that is that you then start to scrub detail. Uh, you start to lose detail. You start to get overblown uh, side of things. Um, one thing I I really do notice with this is uh, is red is pushed quite a bit. Um, so not only is the uh, and you can see it really quite clearly there. You know, between the LG and the the Samsung, uh, and they're both in filmmaker mode. This should look. Uh, very similar, but obviously the it's different panel technology. You have that different uh, spectral re uh, from there, so it's it's not great um, if you're looking for accuracy. Now, if accuracy is not your thing, if you want a nice, bright, glaring, garish colours and all the rest of it, and you want something that's going to pop off the screen, the Samsung will do that for you. All Samsung products do that. Um, if that's what you want, that's uh, that's it's going to do that. If you're looking for accuracy, I wait on my review. Um, I, I really want to spend a bit more time. And as you can see, we have got the facilities to test the TVs side by side and measure them side by side and so on. And we will film them side by side as well. Um, you know, looking at it from a, a camera that's not great built into my laptop and so on. Um, don't judge any picture quality on the, on the camera um, and what you're seeing over this stream. But um, yeah, it's it's doing a couple of naughty things. Other things that I oh. just wanted to quickly mention was the UI is buggy and it is slow at times. Um, and then at other times it'll fly along like it's the fastest thing ever. So uh, again, it's a bit hit and miss, a bit inconsistent there. Um, build quality, I've already covered that. Um, so in terms of QD OLED, do I like it? Yes, I think it's great. Um, it's really, really good technology. Uh, I can't wait to see what else we get this year, especially from Sony. I've already seen the Sony. It is really impressive. Um, we will get hold of one for long-term testing. We're going to put all these screens together. Um, how does it stack against the G2, the LG G2? Very close. For most things, um, both of them are very, very close. Um, Colour volume-wise, you're going to get that little bit more out of the Samsung. But again, at the minute, it's... If accuracy is, is your thing, I would hang on. Um, don't go out and buy straight away. Uh, let's see what the rest of the year has to has to offer. Um, but in terms of my initial thoughts, it's impressive. It's just it does a few things that I'm not particularly happy about. Um, and I want to do a bit more digging into things and uh, find out just how accurately it will calibrate. Because if it's doing a defeat thing when it gets standard window sizes, um, how accurate is your calibration going to be? 
because if you're getting inaccurate readings and, and you're working on in, inaccurate readings, it, it's going to be inaccurate. So uh, again, I want to have a, a good uh, look at that. But any thoughts from uh, you, Jules? Yeah, I mean, that's disappointing to hear. Um, you know, um, Samsung do have a, a history of doing this before, haven't they? Um, but filmmaker mode is there for a reason it's supposed to be the most accurate mode and if they have been um fiddling um that would be disappointing um, mm. because 10 percent windows is what we all use as uh, calibrators and reviewers to test these things and um if it doesn't give you that um a true representation of what it's going to be doing overall, then how can you trust your calibration? I mean, how did you find the uh, the color management system, Phil? Um, because over the past few years, I've found it decreasing in its efficacy, to be honest. And um, to, to be honest with you, um, I've done yep. very little in terms of uh, looking at the color side of things. It's, I've been more concerned about what it's actually doing with, with the UTF tracking. That's mm. what I spent most of my time on. Yeah. Um, I haven't had a chance to really sort of sit down and do a full um, start to finish calibration on it just yet. Um, it's again, I, I want to find out what it's doing before I, I then spend hours trying to calibrate it and then find that at the end of the day, it hasn't done what I wanted it to do. Uh, but yeah, the CMS has never been great mm. on, on the Samsungs. It has, it, it needs to de develop. I mean, L LG do it right, Panasonic do it right, Sony um, have a good system as well. Um, Samsung need to catch up in, in that regard, I think. But so. they did have a very good system. I remember mm. talking to Steve uh, years yeah. ago about this, you know, and we'd, we'd sort of rub our hands. Oh, it's a Samsung today. It means the kind of management system is going to work very well. It's going to be a very nice system. Um, but it started to go downhill, became less accurate, became less effective. And a couple of years ago, they had one which allowed you 25, 50, 75% um, CMS, and it just didn't work properly. And um, you know, so it's been going downhill for a, for a number of uh, for a number of years. Um, yeah. Well, uh, like I say, we are going to be working on this. I'm just going through uh, to see if there's any questions that are relevant right now to while we're talking about the Samsung. Uh, so, I Rod, um, or sorry, AI Rod says, "Bright living room only interested in movies. Don't care about accuracy. Is the TV I should get? Probably. Um, if if you're not bothered about accuracy, why spend three thousand four hundred quid on a TV or vivid mode um, on something else? Yeah, exactly. Uh, if you know, and and this is the thing that um, I find quite strange is is that uh, you would go to that kind of expense with this kind of technology and not want accuracy. Um, I can't get my head around that. I mean, obviously, it's up to you. It's your TV. It's your money. You go and buy it, and you set it up the way you like, and you're not going to get any pushback from me. It's just I struggle with the the concept, and maybe it's because uh, for a long time I've always pushed for accuracy and, and how the creator intended it, and that doesn't mean that it needs to be dim and dark and all the rest of it. It's that it should follow the standards, and standards are there for a reason. Now, most TV manufacturers have five or six picture presets, some even more than that, all we're asking for are two, mm. one for daytime viewing, one for nighttime viewing that are accurate, or one filmmaker mode, which has everything switched off. Um, mm. That's all we're asking for. You can do, manufacturers can do whatever they like with, with other picture modes and people will love it. And I've got to say, I have put this in vivid mode with the picture processing all switched on and all the rest of it. And I can see why people would want to sit and watch that. It's appealing to the eye. It's not accurate. You're missing a shed load of detail. It doesn't look anything like it was supposed to look, um, especially if it's film at 24 frames. It, you know, it's supposed to look a certain way. Um, the director spends a lot of time making sure that objects in the screen and so on is a certain color, so it draws your eyes to that. And there will be objects that they don't want you to draw your eyes to, which if it's all wrong and it's all set up wrong and it's just yeah. pure vivid colors, um, you completely lose that. But again, it's entirely up to you how you set your TV up. Uh, nobody's forcing you. Nobody's putting a gun to your head or anything like that and saying you must do this. Uh, but And you don't need to be a calibrator either. I saw another thing that said best TV for HDR if you aren't a calibrator. I disagree with that. I don't think it's the best TV for HDR at all. Um, it's very promising technology. I just don't think any of the picture presets that Samsung have put on this TV at the minute um, actually do show you HDR. Um, in the correct way, without blowing highlights, without um, crushed blacks and so on. Um, so I would disagree with that 
that as well. Um, it's it's the thing though. If if you want uh, a TV that's going to blow you away in terms of vivid colours and all the rest, of it don't spend three thousand pounds on it. Go spend eight hundred quid on an LCD or whatever, and you're going to get that. Um, I really don't understand the argument at all. So anyway. And we need to move on because I don't want to spend hours on this either. The review is coming. Um, we bought this TV. It's purchased. So it's staying around. It's not going anywhere for a good few months at the minute. We're going to get all the TVs in together uh, side by side. We're going to test them all. And at the end of the day, we're not going to tell you by X, Y, Z. We'll give you the information and it'll be unbiased information. It's objective uh, information, which is another reason why we do things to standards because you can properly judge uh, quality, uh, picture quality, and so on between products that we.